Let's look at question three. Question three is quite unpleasant. It's not quite as unpleasant as question two, but still, it's not for nice. We're given a series of bits of information about the unions of some, some events. And so we need to make use of our addition rules and some of the rules about independence in order to calculate in order to get simultaneous equations that we can solve for the individual probabilities. So recall that the probability of x union y is the probability of x plus the probability of y plus mi sorry minus the probability of their intersection. Like so. Then we also have for independent events x intersection y is px times py. Or px intersection y equals zero xy mutually exclusive. Right, so, or disjoint. So we have um, two events that are, that are disjoint, mutually exclusive, and we have the others are um, independent. A and C are independent. Um, B and C are independent. So let's do a Venn diagram of this as well. This is set C. This can be set A, this can be set B. So we've got something that looks a bit like a frog. That's the intersection A and C. That's the intersection B and C. Obviously, there's no intersection between B and A because the sets are disjoint. So let's use these rules here to write down relations between A, B, and C. Okay, so that follows from um, the first rule I wrote down and the second one from um, independent events. This is the same two rules, just applied at once. Um, instead of writing out the, the same thing. Um, oh, it's essentially just writing out the same thing. The last one, the, the thing that's a bit tricky is this triple union here. Um, we just need to be a bit careful about that. P, A, union B, union C. If we treat A union B, right, this set and this set, even though they're disjoint, they can still have a union, We'll treat that as one set, union with C. We apply our good old rule. Oops. Right now, a, inter A union B intersection with C, that's this red shaded bit and the blue bit. Oh, sorry, the, the yellow bit. Right, so the red bit is A intersection C. Um, B intersection C is the yellow part, and the union of, all, of the, both those sets 
is um, going to be those two things, right? So we can write this term by considering our Venn diagram. Um, as um, minus P A intersection C minus P B intersection C. All right. Um, is there another piece I have to worry about? No. What we've got to do now is we've got to rewrite this one. We can obviously rewrite these two, the two intersections, because they're independent events. This one, we can apply this rule, and because the intersection is going to be empty, we, because B... Uh, a and B are uh, mutually exclusive. We have PA plus PB plus PC minus PA minus PC. Oops, sorry, times times PC. Um, minus PB times PC. Okay, and we have that as 11 twelfths. So this is our third equation. This is our second equation. This is our first equation. We have three equations. We have three unknowns, PA, PB, PC. So it's now a case of doing some um, um, operations to um, cancel all the bits out um, to find something that's actually useful. The thing that we do is we take equation um, 1, we subtract off equation 2 and equation 3. So, we just have to be careful um, with all of our signs. Oops. I feel like this isn't quite the best way of doing it. Let's just um, did I make sign errors? I have made a sign error. I've actually made a thinking error. That's not the, the best way to simplify it. I want to take equation 3. I also don't want to make another video. And I want to subtract, yes, I want to subtract 2 and 1 from equation 3. I'm sorry. PA plus PB plus PC. Minus P A, P C, minus P B, P C, minus ha, P A, minus P C, plus P B, P C. Yeah, now this is working out. 
minus. Um, oops, sorry, that should be an A. P B minus P C plus P B P C. Right now that'll be equal to 11 over 12 minus 2 over 3 minus 3 over 4. Now we can just go through and artistically cross out all the bits that we have. Um, PA cancels like so. PC, that one goes. This PB goes. Uh, minus PAPC plus PAPC. So that one's gone. Minus PBPC plus PBPC. Right, so we've got <clears throat> minus PC equals, um, when we deal with the right hand side of this, you know, 11 twelfths minus two thirds minus three quarters, that bubbles down to negative half. So PC is equal to a half. Now that's pretty much cracked the problem open because we can start back substituting it. Um, and if we put um, PC, the known value, into this equation, we've got PB plus a half minus a half PB equals three fourths. So this lets us simplify. We've got a half PB equals a quarter. So PB is apparently a half. Let me just check that I haven't made a mistake. Um, I have not. And the last one is we take our value for PC and we stick it into this two-thirds equation. So we also have that PA plus a half minus a half PA equals two-thirds. Um, so this bubbles down to a half PA equals um, two thirds minus a half, which is a sixth. So PA equals third. Fun.